Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Design Talk, I want to talk about this. Oh, look, one landed standing up. Interesting. So in this episode, I want to talk about this um, tool holder that I came up with for the mini lathe. So I'm doing this in a Design Talk episode and not a mini lathe ep episode because I want to share with you some of the trials and tribulations because you can kind of see here I've gone through numerous iterations of this model trying to get it just right and I want to talk about that and share that with you guys so as you're working through your various models you know you kind of have a little bit of an idea and kind of learn from some of the trials and tribulations that I went through. So to start with the idea is is I've got this these quick change tool holders so if you look back in the mini lathe series uh, I installed this this quick change tool holder on the mini lathe and what happens is this has like a dovetail that locks on to the quick change tool post now what I wanted to do was make something to store these on the lathe so uh, it would clip on the back of the lathe and I'll do a little bit of an overlay so you can kind of see what I'm getting at and then be able to slide off however there's a couple different dynamics with it. So it needed to be able to slide on and off easy it also needed to be able to slide on and off the back of the lathe easy um, but but not so much where when I lifted this off it would come off and so that's some of the challenges I had and as I went through this this is a rather tightly toleranced uh, cut piece now what I did is I, I measured this all out very detailed and I created a replica of it in Fusion 360 now sort of the pieces is, is I was messing with this what I needed to do is come out from this face now the thing is in the real world the way that this tool mounts is tight against this face because what happens is a piston that comes out and holds this in place and so you know I'm kind of fighting the intended use versus the you know the practical intent of what I was trying to achieve ie a loose fit now when I would push this out what would happen is I push this out these points would become wider because I mean basically this is nothing more than a couple of triangles and a rectangle put together so I really had to go through a lot of iterations to get this just right and also uh, a lot of little tiny details to get it to fit uh, in a repetitive manner because I also tried different plastics PLA pet G uh, and, and each had its own little nuances if you will both in expansion and contraction of the plastic which was another problem because when I put this model out when I put these models out on Thingiverse I don't know if you're going to use PLA I don't know if you're going to use pet G I don't know if you're going to use ABS so I try to come up with a model that kind of works in a multi-material mode wherever possible sometimes it's not possible but I, I like to kind of keep it that way so a lot of thinking has to go into this so in the in the actual fusion model um, I did a couple different things I actually took off like a quarter millimeter or release these sides now I tried filleting these sides and it just simply didn't work because of the roundness would actually bind in the these angular corners so that didn't work so I had to basically take um, a rectangle run it down here and cut the body uh, just ever so much about a quarter millimeter just to relieve that angle in an angular fashion So I don't didn't have a hard angle the other piece is you notice I put a real steep fillet here To allow this tool piece to slide on so it's got a nice fit So it doesn't it doesn't really wobble of course it wobbles a little bit because I've had to push this away So it doesn't have any friction when you lift it on or off because the idea is if you wanted to sit in the back of the lathe You just lift it off put it back on it should be easy peasy. Um, I also wanted it to sit on the bottom here, but also in this, I didn't want to use a ton of plastic. I could probably reduce the plastic even a little bit more here, but I didn't want to bring the plastic all the way out here. I mean, there was just no reason for it. I just kind of wanted to stop going down. Also, uh, one of the things I thought about to save even more plastic was knocking a hole in here. Because again, these are some of the things when you're thinking about designing for production, you really kind of have to think about all the pieces. And plastic is money. 
Also, machine time is money. So the less time I have to spend of the machine printing and the less plastic, the cheaper the part is for when I go to market, right? So uh, that's a couple other things I thought about was punching holes here, here, and here. I wouldn't punch holes in the back because, again, these are already pretty thin as it is. And with the PLA, I run the risk of breaking it because I only have like about two millimeters of material up here. Uh, but also, you notice I knocked out material here. Instead of having this whole piece go across, um, I, I knocked this out so I can use less material again. So as you're designing it, keep thinking about that. How can I take away material, maintain strength, and also add a little architectural uniqueness to it? Because again, I think removing this makes it a little bit more professional looking than if I just left it go all the way across. So I'm saving material. I'm creating a more professional look. Also, when it's cinching on to the machine, it also does a little bit better job uh, because one of the things I found in some of the earlier prototypes where I did have it go all the way across, the way it tilted up with the two separate pieces, the torque on this top part is less. It's actually independent. And especially because there are some anomalies in the thickness here and because of the way it printed. So that structurally works out better. Now, I didn't go yet with the holes in the center here, um, just for simplicity's sake, and, and I kind of like the looks of this. But again, something to think about as you go through your design process. Also, design is iterative. So, as you can see here, these are just a few of the different models. So, I've used, um, well, you know, most of them are orange. They are actually different uh, uh, versions of PLA, etc., that I was testing. I've also tested PETG, uh, and that's primarily what I kind of stick to. I really don't do too much with ABS anymore. Um, I will do some stuff with HIPS in, in ASA, depending upon the application, but for general usage, I'm sticking with um, PLA and, and PETG. That covers 90% of my needs. So anyways, I hope you found this interesting. Maybe it took a little bit of inspiration, but as we've been talking about in the BizTalk series, um, you know, as I was mentioning, I designed my own version, and here it is. And again, I'll have this out on Thinkverse. If you've got a mini life, hey, go out there and grab it. Um, and, you know, mess around with it and have some fun with it. But uh, again, this is meant to inspire you guys, to give you guys some ideas about the design process, what to look for, how to think about the design process, and how to make it work for you. So again, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget the bell button, which means go down there, click that bell till you get the parent so you're notified when I put out content. Swag Shop's going to be up in the corner, and I assume you're already a subscriber, right? If not, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video when we design something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on more.